Welcome everyone to the 2024 January Beginner TAC Tournament. This is the quarterfinals. This match is between the One Rogue and Spinoza. Uh, Spinoza has been around for a little bit. The One Rogue is fairly new to the game of TAC and to the TAC community online. As you can see here, we are playing on a 6x6 board with a 15 minute time limit, a 10 second increment, no Comey, don't need to worry about that. And this is the quarterfinals. We are playing two games in this match, each playing as the other color. And the winner of the match moves on to the semifinals. So that is really exciting. Uh, this is the first tournament for the one rogue. I believe Spinoza has played in um, at least one other. We are good to go. They're good to go. Here we go. Starting off right away with A1 and then F6 opposite corners here. And going straight in for that center control, not playing that Knight's opening that we see so often from uh, a lot of the top players right now. And then going straight across. Interesting playing on that horizontal line here instead of going down. Uh, to sort of block black and instead you're setting black up to be able to block you very easily while still going for your own threat so and this opens up a spot for a capstone from black very very nice spot there follows a lot of the guidelines that we talk about in the capstones video of TAC University and so Spanos is probably deciding do I want to drop a cap here do I want to save it for one of these center spots uh, what do I want to do here? That cap feels like a really solid spot, and it's exactly what he does. Does drop that cap right there. Really, really good positioning right now for Black. I feel like once Black played here and White played here, that was setting Black up for a really good spot. I feel like this C4, while it was essentially move three, it really put them on the back foot there. They could have continued on and played at D3, had momentum, kept that and forced black to go for something else. But instead, they played up here at C4, allowing black to continue, block them, and play for their own threat, and eventually set up for this nice capstone placement. So it is wild how a move as early as move three can heavily impact that opening game and that whole positioning right now in the center of the board. It's very much looks in black's favor here. Now black's capstone, Cannot be isolated here, even if white does decide to make some sort of capture to interrupt this black threat. Uh, black's capstone is going to be able to either come down or left to go on top of one of white's flats. And that makes it a great capstone placement. It's one of the, one of the things that makes it a great capstone placement. White drop on that cap also. Now this is a pretty good turnaround here. White now has this capstone in this spot, has this great citadel, able to come over and capture onto Black's line, interrupt that. White actually has the makings of a vertical and a horizontal here. Now White is in a better position. Just how quickly this game can turn around with uh, the right positioning here. Black basically has all their eggs in this vertical threat basket right now. White, because they have been forced to kind of change gears a couple times, has a few different avenues. This is not looking too bad for him right now. Black shifting gears, going across here, uh, probably going for the horizontal, but also trying to cut off White from making that vertical threat here. White blocking that off with E5. I feel like that's a totally fine spot to place as well. Um, I like, uh, like, I'm, I'm very wary of playing a piece like that because capstones often drop in a spot like that. Granted, this capstone's already here. And Spinoza probably thinks if a capstone's good here, a wall would be good here as well. And he's not wrong. It's, it's not a bad spot for it if you want to play a very defensive game right there. Uh, I don't like to play walls unless I can get a stack out of it. Um, that's not necessarily a, a rule or anything, and I often play walls in an area where I can't get a stack out of it, but I don't like to. 
uh, being able to get that stack and recover those flats is, uh, is a big one for me. White continuing on for this vertical line, interestingly not going for the horizontal line yet, just gonna keep playing that vertical. Playing up here at d6 is, um, I don't know, it, it invites that wall to come up. And that wall coming up isn't necessarily bad uh, because that wall coming left is worse. So that might be the better play here to be able to play up at d6, kind of get that wall to come up. Then you can go for your horizontal along this side, uh, probably up here at like a4, something like that. And that way you can interrupt um, what black's vertical and also go for that horizontal that you want. Black pl playing out here at a3. I think this is setting up. He wants to build out at a4 and then he can drop at a2. And that way he can uh, counteract this capstone coming left and go for this vertical that way. Um, that is what I'm guessing he's going for. Really wants to just play that, uh, that, that position up so that this capstone coming left is negated. But that requires a lot of preemptive moves here. And Black's got to defend against this, uh, this road threat here. I think this E4 plus move with that wall would be the move to make. Um, coming left with the wall is a lot stronger. Ooh, okay. Now this is interesting because coming down with the flat first makes it so if white ever makes a recapture here, black can come left with the wall and then use that captive flat that he's got there to spread down and really make a solid positive flat count differential move. Um, he would be handing that on a platter to this capstone. However, might not be that big of a deal if he can get enough momentum back for uh, for this vertical threat first. Yeah, this isn't too bad. White probably wanting to play. So making the threat at D5 isn't terrible, but it's also not great. Um, it'll get that capstone potentially to move. Uh, maybe get this wall to move. But if the capstone moves and comes over here onto D5, white just plays at C5. So the capstone moving isn't a great move. This wall coming left onto D4 might be what he wants to do. That's a self capture, but that and, and so that does put him a little bit behind in terms of flats on the board, because it's like a minus one move. Granted, he can use that stack later to spread upwards, perhaps. Um, maybe to the left if he wants to do that, maybe down. Instead, bringing that cap down. Now, that's interesting because it's kind of relinquishing that, that control spot on C5. He wanted to be able to come left onto B5 to make a threat later on no longer able to do that, is able to play up at C5, C6 with flats later on here. Not a big deal, but white probably wants to drop a flat up at C5. It helps block black a little bit, also goes for that horizontal thread up on the top hand side of the board here. So playing a flat at C5 gives you the ability to go for like an A5, then you've got a threat here. White instead self captures going for the tack threat in the vertical direction here hoping that black misses it, maybe comes left with a, a wall or something. But if the capstone comes right or this flat comes up onto D5, it is uh, something that, uh, that will work for black. Granted, this stack on D4 coming up is a little bit dangerous for black because white's able to toss that up there, get a big stack under this, no longer a hard stack, but get a big stack under that, able to spread that left, go for horizontal threats at the top now. Uh, it ends up being a, a pretty solid play. So probably want to bring that capstone on, D, on C4 over onto D4 here. 
that seems to be making a lot of sense for me at least. Yep, Capstone does come over. Now, will White just play here at C5? Or will there be another move here? I feel like C5 is pretty good here. But white's got to be really careful. If black's able to get this A2 spot in, that could be really dangerous for making uh, this, this vertical threat here, spreading this left potentially. Um, I mean, granted, you can't spread that left unless you're making the road because white would win there. But... Um, some some dangerous positioning that uh, black can get here. Black probably wants to just drop a flat at a5 right there. That sets them up to block this white horizontal up at the top. Also sets black up to make a threat on the following turn with an a2. If white doesn't make a threat with, for example, c4. c4 would be a road threat in the vertical direction here and would require some play probably with this capstone to move up and interrupt that and if the capstone does move up that is very close to anyway for black being able to spread left and, and interrupt all that stuff that is a very dangerous position to be in so white's got to be thinking ahead maybe c4 isn't the play you want to make here maybe it is but maybe it isn't Tough to say how this one's going to go. I like Black's positioning here with that stack. is in a pretty good position under that capstone to mess up a lot of what White's doing. White makes the threat. Black probably going to come up onto D5 here. If, if, White come, if Black comes up onto D5 with this capstone stack, it is very close to, uh, to over here for White. Probably if this capstone stack comes up onto D5, white's probably going to want to play up at C6. It'll continue that vertical threat. Also, it will have another flat here able to come left, mess up this vertical line that, uh, that black is going for. Yeah, I think uh, I think moving the cap to d5 is the move here. Taking their time. Both players playing fairly quick here. Um, only five minutes gone from the clock on Spinoza. Granted, they do have a 10 second increment, so more than five minutes, of course. Uh, but then the one rogue up there just below 12 minute mark on the clock here. So they have a lot of time. And this is a good point of the game to spend a lot of that time and make these hard choices here on this move. As you've, you've got plenty of time to do it. And this is a very, very pivotal point in this game. Interestingly, coming right with, I didn't even look at that as an option. Now this opens up white to drop a wall on B4, and that is pretty brutal for, uh, for black. It feels like that is the go-to play right now, is to drop that wall on B4. Because, let's say you get 
you get the wall right here. Actually, let's make that red. You get the wall right here. Oh, it goes for the flat instead? I mean, I would understand if that were attack threat, but it isn't. Goes for the flat. Now, this is tricky because black does have that cap stack he can use. Black might want to drop it a two. Oh, does a two work for black? Does it work? It's not a threat. A4 would stop the horizontal threat from happening. Because white playing at A4 is a horizontal threat coming along here all the way to F6 or to F5, either one. But playing that opens up white to just drop a flat at c3 or a flat at c2 a flat at c3 or a flat at c2 either one would be attack threat now the c2 is sneakier Oh, but is it easier to defend against maybe? If white if if black instead if if white plays c2 and black walls, white smashes and makes the threat again. Okay, so it's not that bad. I like c2. Um in these beginner games, playing something a little bit sneaky is gonna have a lot higher success rate than in those higher level games. The games with like the top five, top ten players. Playing a sneaky threat can work. It's not It's not to say that it's not going to work. It totally can work. The top players missed road threats. Not all the time, but it does happen. Um, so it does happen, and it happens a lot more in these beginner tournament games. Granted, we are in the quarterfinals of this beginner tournament, so these are the top beginners right now. But it's still kind of a tricky spot to be in. And it always feels bad to miss a sneaky threat, but it feels pretty good to get someone on a sneaky threat because getting that game, getting that, that sneaky win in there, that sneaky road, that's pretty satisfying because it's like, I've set this trap. I know that it is hard to see. I'm counting on you to see it, but if you don't see it, I'll take it. Okay, so he does play at a4 to block that horizontal line. This is where I was thinking he, uh, white could play at c2. Instead, makes the capture. Now, this is a really smart move with this capture here. And the reason why, like you may think, this looks terrible because it's this big stack right next to the capstone. But the capstone can't move because it is pinned. If the capstone moves left to capture onto this c4 stack, white can come up and just make the road win. So black is basically forced to come up here with their own capstone to cut that off. Now, white is able to renew a threat by placing up at uh, C6 or by placing at C3. Either C3 or C6 will work, but white has to be careful not to fall into a trap of getting stuck in Tinyway because this is very, very close to a good position here for black. Black's got this, this vertical line working really well. Granted, this stack here at C4 is able to come left and kind of cut that off, so it's not that urgent of a deal, uh, of, of, a, of a situation here, but... You know, it's it's not bad. I like this position now for white. White is in a really, really good spot here still. Uh, can still have control of this game. 
doesn't really need to worry about this vertical threat here from black because of this c4 stack able to come left and interrupt all of that in a way that it can't be immediately recovered. White making that tack threat. This is where I think we might see that capstone come left. No, the flat comes right. Interesting. So will we see a B6 placement? If B6 gets played, that's another tack threat here for white. Hmm. Now, if only white had something like e6 or f5 played, they could toss this capstone up, make the horizontal threat and the vertical threat at the same time. Unfortunately, they, they don't have that there. Also, this wall would be able to come up and just kind of cut both of those off, but goes for that move anyway not making attack threat. I will stress, this is not a threat in any direction for a road. It's one move away from that. Black, however, does have the ability to make a threat on this turn. If they play over here at A2 or at A6, either one is a road threat. And I think that it is pretty dangerous if black were to say play at a6, white spreads across here to the left with that capstone. That is in a very, very tricky spot there for, for black to defend. They'd basically be forced to drop a wall here at d3. And it's, it's not, uh, not a guaranteed uh, thing there. Also, you could see that e6 or f5 placement dropped if black doesn't make a threat here on this turn. But now black is getting a little short on time, down below, uh, almost down to that five minute mark. And white, barely up above nine minutes here on the clock. So plenty of time to play with and plenty of time to think for white, less time to think for black. Black drops that wall. That is a good wall placement. However, white can drop the flat at D3. This makes attack threat. Black's only move right now is to bring that wall over, and that's what they do. Now, white can smash this, and smashing that retains attack threat. So it retains it because smashing it still makes that connection here, 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 all the way to B6. So they can still smash that and not lose here to any road or anything like that. Totally viable move. In fact, I, I would go so far as to say that's the move I like most right now is smashing that. But I am also known to make very rash decisions in tag games, especially when it comes to smashing walls. So it might not be the best move, but it's the move I would want to make here. So let's see, what other moves could be on the table here for white? Um, playing at B6 could be one. Uh, that would be a threat and would make it so that this B4 wall would be the one that would need to come over onto C4 instead of this one. Um, and then uh, an A6 could be played to make that horizontal threat. But then you've got that captive underneath this wall that can then be used to make positive flak on differential moves. And if you're thinking, what the heck is a positive flak on differential move? We talk about that in the FCD or flat count differential video of TAC University. And it's basically moves that change the difference between your flat count and your opponent's flat count. You can have a plus two or a plus three uh, drop on a flat is just a plus one move, so a lot of different things you can do here. But capturing a stack with a wall, with your own captive under it, is a good way to then make a follow-up spread to make a plus two move.
All right, that wall does come over as expected. Now we'll white play at a6 to go for the horizontal threat. Or will they go for something else? Playing at a6 for the horizontal threat is a whole lot better than playing at, at e6 or f5 for the horizontal threat. Because if they played here, for example, black could just play at a6 with a flat and make their own road threat. Uh, while cutting off their uh, white's threat. So a6 definitely better if you wanted to go for that horizontal. Way better than e6 or f5. Now, I may be mistaken, but I think maybe smashing that wall earlier um, was the play instead of playing up, up there before at b6. I think smashing it was the play, but I could be wrong. Maybe it wasn't b6. What was it? It was, yeah, instead of b6, smashing that I think would have been pretty good, but we'll never know. White does play at a6 though, going for that horizontal line, also blocking off black a little bit for that uh, vertical threat. If black misses that this is a horizontal threat, black could play down here. Doesn't miss it, however, but white is able to now smash this wall on c5. Smashing that wall on c5 is great because it's a vertical threat uh, to spread down. And I like it a lot. I think it's really good. And it doesn't really give up anything here. It's, I, th I feel like that's just a pure gain move. Um, there, is, there is nothing to lose with that. That is a great move opportunity to smash that on c5. White now down lower on time, down to six minutes on the clock. Spanosa in black down below five at 445. Let's see, what other move could you make here? I feel like that smash has to be the move. It's being served up to you on a silver platter, basically. What does black do in response to that smash? No. This sets you back on momentum and makes it dangerous. Like, I understand you're going for this vertical line, but with this wall here, it's basically going to be next to impossible to make that happen. Black makes this. This is a threat now. Black can throw either the capstone or this flat all the way to A6. This is another one of those tricky threats, easy to miss in beginner tournaments. I don't feel like white's going to miss that because it seems because he's basically been setting up for this move for 10 moves or more. So white doesn't miss the move, makes the play, cuts down. What is black going to do? If black comes over with that wall onto a5, white has to smash it. Has to smash it. Interesting. Okay, so white can make a play here by playing at f5, and that would be a, a attack threat because you could smash this wall on d4 to make the connection. That is a line that I would consider to be tougher to see for beginners because that particular way of how, just how it is, it's hard to explain, uh, but the way that that threat works because it's sort of like this curve around the capstone and the capstone smashing that wall to continue it, that makes it harder to spot. And I could definitely see black missing that if white were to play, for example, here at F5, uh, that would be a road threat. 
But also, because it's a beginner game, it would be harder for white to see that that's an option even. So because it's hard to see, it also means it's less likely, but white looks like they see it. Looks like they see this, this threat option here, making a good play, going for the tack threat, a sneaky tack threat, I will say. Not only is it a sneaky tack threat, but it's also setting up for a smash on C5. So if this wall, for example, comes down, smashing on C5 is also a threat in the horizontal direction. Like, it's just good. It is a good play. And it may be that white doesn't even see this road opportunity by smashing and is just looking at the potential for the road threat after smashing this. Black missed it. Black missed the road. White sees it. White takes the game with that sneaky little smash threat. Congratulations to the one rogue for winning game one of this two game match against Spanos in the quarterfinals of the January 2024 beginner tank tournament. That was a great game. A uh, great sneaky little threat there at the end to smash that and kind of curve around. Like I did say, that particular positioning is tough to see. And we saw exactly that same thing happening, missing that threat entirely. Uh, great, great positioning, great setup on that, uh, that little tag threat there from uh, the one rogue. And so they do have one more game to play, potentially one more, maybe more, um, based on uh, how the outcome of it goes. If the one rogue wins his black in the next game, one rogue wins and goes immediately on to the semifinals of this tournament. But if they lose as black, then they will need to play some tiebreakers, which I believe are blitz tiebreakers. So that's pretty tough. But that is all for today. Thanks for watching. Be sure to check out the description below for all things TAC, especially the TAC Discord server, which is the community hub and where you can find all sorts of TAC resources like strategy guides and people to play with, whether that be right here on playtac.com or asynchronously through the Discord server itself. You can find tons of people to play with, tons of resources. It is a lot of fun. And I will be back with game two of this matchup next week. So be sure to check that out. And until next time, have a great day and happy tacking.